Hi there YouTubers, this is a 2001 Mazda MPV and I have to work on my idle air control valve or the IAC or IAC, depends how you pronounce it. And the idle air control valve or IAC is usually what you uh, will hear um, it called is um, controls the engine's um, throttle at idle. If your gas pedal is, uh, if your foot's not on the pedal or you're decelerating the IAC takes over and controls the idle of the motor. So for example, if you had a stoplight and your air conditioner kicks in, there's more load on the motor and uh, the idle air control will regulate the um, air intake into the engine to keep the idle relatively stable. So um, in a nutshell, when your foot's not on the pedal and the throttle body is open, it's the idle air control valve that controls by opening and closing um, a little door here, this is done by a stepper motor that's attached to the computer. So the com computer of the car can adjust how much open and close to allow air coming in to, um, to control the idle. That's in a nutshell. Now, if you have problems, um, idle air uh, do go eventually and they usually gum up with carbon or whatnot from the intake. Uh, they can cause problems like, like a horrible idle. You know, you're running fine, but as soon as you come to a stop, it's stalling problems, just rough idle. On this particular Mazda, my idle, uh, my IAC is giving me um, some interesting problems with the air box. So I'm getting a hooting sound, or um, kind of sound like a brake rubbing sound, kind of weird. Uh, it pulsates, and this is a kind of a common problem um, when the, so I think it was, I believe is a spring-loaded mechanism in the, uh, in the IAC valve that's acting up. Uh, and that causes uh, pulsating, air pulsating action, uh, which makes uh, like a weird sound coming out of the, um, out of the air box. It's kind of like a trumpet, I guess. And um, it can, it, a hooting sound on some other cars, it sounds more like a vacuum cleaner. It depends on the sound. But So I have, I have this problem right now, so I'm going to take out the, uh, the, the idle air control on this Mazda. And I'm going to try and clean it first. This is usually about an $80 part. Uh, it varies, but about an $80 part, uh, probably higher, it depends where you are. And I'm going to try cleaning it out first and see if I can, um, if cleaning out helps. And if it doesn't, I'm going to have to replace it. So let's get started. It's pretty base straightforward. This particular, uh, you might want to get this wire out of the way. This is your EGR valve here. And I would suggest perhaps just pulling out firmly here and pulling this plug out like this, put it to the side. And then on the IAC valve here, uh, the IAC, whatever you want to call it, there is this kind of a, a, a cable, this is kind of the cable wire harness going into it and it's kind of, it's got this plastic clip on thing, you just pull this back like this and remove it and then tuck this down. This this goes to the this is it goes to the connector of the IAC valve. So now you have uh, I'm not sure what bolt size, I'm gonna find out in a second. You're gonna need a long socket. I'm looking like an eight millimeter I'm guessing right now. Uh, looks a little, a little bit too small to be a ten. Um, there's one here and one on the bottom and we're gonna unbolt that. Keep in mind when you unbolt this thing there's a thin gasket. That gasket can fall off very easily so be, be ready to catch it or it might be sticking to the manifold itself. So um, uh, keep that in mind uh, so you don't lose that. Yeah, it's like a thin metallic gasket. All right, so I'm gonna go grab my socket and uh, get this, take this guy off on the back here. And um, we'll get started. It is indeed a 10 millimeter. Um, it is indeed a 10 millimeter nut here. And if you don't have a deep socket, you can just use a, uh, you only need to break it loose and then she comes loose on her own. This top bolt here. And I will get a socket out for, to get at the bottom one. Right below. You're going to work blind in the back. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, for the rear, for the, for the bolt in the bottom, I'm using a uh, 10 millimeter again and I'm using a short extension just so I can get in behind here and you can just kind of feel your way till you find it. And once again, you just need to break it loose. Not overly torqued it hard, and then you're going to use your hand to uh, to unscrew it. Let me see if I can get my hand behind here. Yep, and there she comes there. 
already she's loosening up. Now, I'm going to get, you, you take your time here because we don't want to lose that bolt in behind there. That will really ruin your day. Because it's kind of awkward to grab it. So I'm going to put the camera down and try to get my other hand in there to catch it. So you don't want to lose that bolt. So I'm putting the camera down and I'm going to try not to lose it. an optional idea that I'm going to do. I got this small little uh, magnetic part, um, parts tray. I'm going to put that in behind there and just drop it down behind there. So in case I do lose that bolt, the chances are that magnetic tray will catch it for me. So you never know, you know, it's one of those things, once you lose something down the engine bay back there, you'd be pretty, you'd be pretty upset, you'd be finding a cat of some kind of animal to kick or something. Not that I'm endorsing cruelty to animals or anything like that, but, you know, it's just one of those things, a quick job like this can turn to a bit of a nightmare. So I'm just gonna unscrew it now. I'm a little confident, confident now, now that i got my little magnetic tray to catch the bolt. Now I left the top one on top, the top bolt's still in place because um, I don't want the whole thing just to fall off when I remove when she comes there. Okay. And I'll just uh, put that on my magnetic tray, drop that down, and here's the top guy, and the top guy will just take that out. Now, we've got this gasket here that we don't want to, um, that one, you know, sometimes it can be sticking or sometimes it'll drop right off. So let me take this guy off first. Okay, I'm going to need both hands in that pretty soon. So, she's wiggling loose now. There, there she comes there. And the wire harness, I'll take the wire harness off afterwards. Oh, well, there's the gasket right there. There she is there. All right, I better try and get my second. I need my second hand. Here come. Here's the gasket. In the middle. I'll put the gasket down out of the way. And here's the throttle body right there. And uh, so it's a stepping motor. It's a stepping motor inside that opens and closes. So there's basically two ports here. So it's gonna be air movement. So it controls the flow of air from one side to the other side, and it's a little, little stepper motor that moves back and forth. I think it's spring loaded as well. So um, some some vehicles are controlled by vacuum. This is strictly um, um, electronic. So I'm going to move, unplug the wire harness, and I'm going to try and see if I can put some, spray some uh, some carburetor cleaner in there and clean it out a little bit. Try and salvage it. All right. So we're looking at the, um, you can kind of see the plunger inside there right now. And um, it goes back and forth. Now that can gum up a little bit in there, and that can cause it to not open and close smoothly, and cause it not to uh, regulate the air and cause idling problems. But these things aren't meant. You can clean them and get some more life out of them, but they are not really meant to be serviceable. So I'm gonna try and clean it up. And uh, if it doesn't improve my situation, then I'll have to fork out the 80 bucks or 90 bucks and get a new one. But all you can do is fill it up with carb um, carburetor cleaner. Just swish it around a little bit in there. You know, it's black it's coming out. So it's, it's, it's gunked up a little bit. Just keep trying that. It's kind of hard to get in there um, and do much in there. Okay, I put it back in. Put the plug back in. There, right there. And stick this little plug thing. There and put my IAC. Sorry, my EGR valve. Okay, so I clean it. I'll take it for test drive. You know, it's one of those things. Good maintenance. Do this once in a while because usually in most cars are pretty easy to take these things off. But you know, as you can see, it's not really a serviceable item. So I clean it out. Got the carbon out the best I can. You know, if it doesn't fix it, then you just gonna have to go and put a new one in. So I'll take it for a drive and I'll know if it fixes it or not. If it doesn't, I'll just go and pick up a new one and drop it in. All right, okay. Uh, good luck, guys, and talk about it.